We're back for our Mission Impossible. What are we calling it again? Ah, uh, the Mopotha Palooza. Cruisathon. Yes. Cruise control. Cruising for a bruising. Tom Cruise is going to kick you with a weird kick. You cruise, you lose. <laughs> That's good. And by you cruise, I mean you don't leave a like. So leave a like and you don't lose. Please, if you could. Uh, now, this series is obviously called Caravan of Garbage. People know that from the title of this video. And often we're like, it doesn't mean anything. It's just the name that we got stuck with. This week it, it means, I think it's very apt. What are you saying, James? I'm saying this is easily the worst Mission Impossible movie. And a lot of it is just garbage. What are we talking about? Oh, we're doing Mission Impossible 2. <laughs> See, what I've done there yes. is I've taken the Mission Impossible theme, but I've given it a little twist. Because this ain't your grandpappy's Mission Impossible. It certainly it's isn't. Mission Impossible 2, directed by Wu. John Wu. <laughs> they brought him on board because Tom Cruise wanted that John Wu flavour. And we yeah. sort of get it. Well, that's the thing, because... I mean, for people who are aware of John Woo, he did like some amazing Hong Kong action movies. He did The Killer, he yep. did A Better Tomorrow, he did Hard Boiled. And then he came to America. Like, it's he sort of pioneered in, in the West this kind of genre of like Hong Kong, gun fu, like yeah. operatic, Hard cinematic. Hard target, yeah, yeah. face off. Broken Arrow, he did those ones. Broken and, Arrow. And he sort of brought this idea of like just this like balletic gunplay like two yeah. gun action it's just brutal and you just empty a whole clip into the in, into the bad guy kind of thing max and Payne! yeah like this this idea and it, it, it influenced like a whole the whole generation of other filmmakers the matrix is sort of yeah, based totally. heavily on on this idea and that spawned a million imitators and you know again the oh he did paycheck Ugh. <laughs> sorry go on well see that's the thing like at a certain point like he did face off which is, you know, you know, people find it fun in a kind of cheesy way. But by this point, all his rough edges have kind of been yeah. sanded off. This movie begins with a kind of like, you know, your classic Mission Impossible espionage, masks are being taken off kind of vibe. Sure. But it also begins with a totally silent neck snap. Like, <laughs> yes, it's it all, does, it's yeah. almost an off-screen yeah. neck snap. And I'm and watching this at the cinema, I'm like... No, some, something's gone wrong here. Yeah. Like something's some something is Because you thought Ethan Hunt had gone rogue. Well, I did think that. Well, which he does in every movie except this one, actually. But but yeah. Well, he does go rogue eventually. He takes his earpiece out. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, it this this movie, it doesn't hold up. And no. you even see from the start the CGI plane, the fashion choices like the sunglasses. The beautiful CGI title sequence. Oh, yeah. exactly. Like I know you've got things to say about the cars. Because it's a very oh, it's a I? very Aussie movie. Yeah, this this movie, it's got all the elements. A lot of John Woo style, but it's yeah. not quite right. It's got like two gun action and people slowly walking through flames. Birds and, and like, doves and birds stuff. Birds and stuff. doves, yeah. exactly. But none of it quite works and I don't no, know why. because it's got sort of kung fu, sort of, I guess. Well, I was going to say, who is this Ethan Hunt? Like if you've just watched the yeah. first one and you go to this one, he's shooting... He's spinning, he's somersault kicking. Yeah. Like, he won't just duck for cover when he can do a little twirl and then duck yeah. for cover. He does a commando roll towards a little grate in the floor at one point. I don't know if you remember yeah, that. Yeah, I do bit. remember that, yeah. Parkour! Yeah, and some of the kicks he does. Oh, look, Tom Cruise is amazing at, at mm. what he does, but he's not a martial artist. I'm sure we're going to refer to this particular scene every week. We're but... going to eat our words when he <laughs> hears this and immediately becomes the world's greatest martial artist. So thanks for that, but continue. But his, his style of combat is more suited to the bathroom scene from the last Mission Impossible movie. Uh -huh. You know, it's breaking tiles and faces. But when you're getting him to do like a two-foot jump kick and a spinning roundhouse handstand, yes. it's ridiculous. They uh -huh. should call this movie Kicking Impossible, Mason. Nice. Thanks. That's good stuff. You know what? I think we have too many kicks in the movie, Tom. I mean, I never say to Wu's face, but I think you got, you know, like how many times can we look at you kicking a guy and then getting kicked in the face? I just... You know what? Kick, kick. Let's call it. Okay. You know, let's call it kicking impossible. Go. I stole that from Ben Stiller. Oh my god! Well, I'm going to call it hair flipping impossible because <laughs> every every somersault kick is just just comes with yeah. a beautiful swoosh of hair. We'll talk about hair. We, later, we talk about hair at the end. And also, of course, every week I am going to be attempting to replicate something from each movie. Somersault kick? <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it here. You got but, a trampoline out there. What are you doing? I've got something even better. People okay. are going to love it. Trust me. So. It does have this distinct Aussie flavour. It's got uh, Powderfinger, a famous Australian band, did a song on the album. At one point, Tandy Newton uh, goes to the horse races and puts a crisp pineapple on the horse. <laughs> That's right, Naturally yeah. vain. It's good to see some Australian hard currency in these movies. A ridiculous, stupid plastic money. <laughs> hey, you can swim with it, and that's why they did it this way. Uh, John Paulson is Billy Bard. Uh, he is the uh, founder of Tropfest. Is he? Australia's uh, largest, and maybe the world's largest short film festival. There you go. Apparently that role was originally going to be uh, taken by Steve Zahn, but he had to pull out at the last minute. Not Aussie enough? Probably. <laughs> yeah. He had to do Sahara in 
five years from this. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Oh, he would have been a good choice, yeah. I mean, the soundtrack, okay, there's, uh, speaking of, you mentioned up top. The, the, I'm not against the uh, the guitar riffing in the Limp Biscuit cover. Yeah. Lyrically, it's the worst song ever made, <laughs> you know? No, I get it's it. It's the classic Mission Impossible theme in a, in, a, in a rock and guitar riff. I think it absolutely works. But there is a reason that none of the lyrics actually make it into the actual film. They're exactly, only in yeah. the end credits. Now, you mentioned it, uh, it was John Woo with the edges sanded off. And I yeah. might actually have an explanation for that. Go because on. Because his original cut for this was three and a half hours. Oh, my God. I know. And it had to be cut down to about two. And Tom Cruise, apparently, and this is all like hearsay and IMDb trivia, locked him out of the editing room. Tom Cruise locked him out? Of, wait. Well, he would have had more creative control because he's choosing who's on it. And I, he's the producer, yeah. yeah. I think Tom Cruise saw the action of Face Off, genuinely. Uh -huh. I think he only saw Face Off and went, faces, masks, uh, kicks, doves. Yeah, all right, this is the guy. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is the guy. That, I think that's that's the train of thought here. Mm, right. Yeah. The essential element of a John Woo movie yeah. is just it's really just visceral. Yeah. And there's no holding back in the action. And I think putting him at the helm of this movie and then asking him to cut out all the exciting stuff yes. is, is probably its downfall. And it just looks, it looks less like visceral action and more like attempted... Cool posing. Yeah, totally. Right? Speaking of, if you look at like the rock climbing, for example, mm -hmm. first of all, Tom Cruise did all of that himself. He was taught how to do it. They got stunt guys, but he did it. He was cabled up, but he did that 15 foot jump like yeah, multiple right. times. But that's the only scene that really stands out for me because there's a cable drop that looks worse than the previous movie. Oh, that's right, yeah. There's a side by side uh, car chase, which is reminiscent of Goldeneye, really, where they're just yeah. chatting casually to each other over <laughs> revving engines going 90. I mean, we often accuse the, the James Bond series of aping more successful action movies, but yeah. I feel like this movie especially uh, has sort of done that as well. It's kind of like aped better stuff, like The Matrix came out the year before, and yeah, I think right. there's elements of that totally. that just sort of shoehorned in. Did you like it when the two cars were wedged together and they were spinning in a circle and they were staring into each other's eyes? Yes. What the fuck was that? I don't know. <laughs> this is also You I nearly think... killed her, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tandy Newton got a real rough deal on this movie. I, in general, yeah. A, a very recent interview with her because she's you know she's in uh, Westworld and a bunch of other yeah. you know, TV series and movies and things. But yeah, she, she this was a very intense experience for her apparently. Well, there's even lines like Anthony Hopkins, who I want to get back to, where they they make her go undercover and he's like, she's deceptive and she doesn't need any spy trading because she's a woman and woman and this is what women this yeah, is what right, they, they totally. naturally lie. But she's mentioned yeah that it was like a stress induced nightmare and Tom Cruise was like friendly but super intense and she was under a lot of pressure and she was quite young at the time and she's even said since then like she doesn't blame him in particular it's just it's just it was a very it was a very tom cruise kind of situation <laughs> yeah, to right. be in an earlier in your career yeah absolutely <laughs> that's exactly it yeah so anthony hopkins uh he's in this he doesn't turn bad or die and then we never see him again in another movie isn't it's, he in three no Huh. It's a strange inclusion. Yeah. And it's not even really clear that he's in IMF, really. <laughs> no. Or where he's from. Yeah. Because he's at some point I'm like, is he doing an American accent? No, no. Is he, oh, wait, did I mishear that? Oh, side note. Australia's own Richard Roxburgh. It was 45 minutes in before I realised he's supposed to be South African. He's supposed to be South African, yes. So this is, this is interesting. I found this... Super fascinating. Ian McKellen turned down the Anthony Hopkins role. And this shoot actually ran long because of rainfall. And if he did take on this role, even though it was only like a five-day shoot, he would have missed out on both Lord of the Rings and X-Men. Do you have, another, you, have another, you have another piece of <laughs> trivia there? I'm going to tell you what it is, I would James. love to fact, hear it. Speaking of X-Men trivia, Do Grey Scott. The anti-Ethan Hunt. That's right, reverse Ethan Hunt. Because it's a team, but they're the opposite team. What's he going to do? Get a team together to fight the teams can fight. Uh... He turned down the role of Wolverine, right, to be in this. Not initially, mm -hmm. but this ran long. Oh, right. He got injured in a motorcycle chase. Uh -huh. They kept kind of delaying it and pushing back and being like, no, he'll be ready or whatever. And then the X-Men producers had to go, we just, we need to recast. Wow. And that's obviously the role that Hugh Jackman sh shot, was shot into stardom. Absolutely. I mean, you know, he, he might still be doing paperback hero sequels at this point, if not for... I, I feel like Hugh Jackman's a kind of actor that probably would have made it regardless. Oh, absolutely. No, he's, yeah. Mm. And who knows, if he was Wolverine, who knows what would have happened. Maybe he wouldn't have, would have been like, eh, he's fine. Yeah. You know, we don't know. Maybe he would have crushed it and he would have... Maybe it would have been him in the movie Australia. Maybe right. he would have been the greatest showman. Oh my God. Can maybe he's hosting the Oscars with Anne Hathaway. Man, maybe he's saying the musical is back. <laughs>
when the musical was maybe probably not back. It's never it's never gone, but it's never quite back. That's right. It's like a low hum, you know what I mean, yeah, in the yeah, background. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes I can hear the people sing. Uh, knife in the eye. That's a pretty good stunt. Remember yeah, knife in the real, eye? That's a real. That's that was involved. That's some sort of it's attached to, system. That's right. It's attached to things. a cable mm-hmm. with Do Gray Scott pressing down as hard as he can, yeah, right. and it's like measured out to stop just in front of his retina. If that's oh. the front of your eye, iris. I don't know a lot about eyes. Retinas at the back. If it, what it was, was, was going to stop just before his <laughs> retina. Oh boy. My understanding of uh, stunt stuff, and I think I saw this on the Corridor Crew channel. If you've got a knife yes. and you're pretending to press it down under somebody, what you're supposed to be doing is you're pulling away. So you, you see the tension. Yeah, right. But right. if there's like a slip, it gets pulled back. So oh, it's strange it. to me that they didn't do that as opposed to it yeah. being on a cable and just dropping it down, <laughs> right? You could have done that in reverse. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? There's a number of ways you could yeah. do it without... They, <laughs> they chose to go, hey, do Grey Scott, this knife is going to plunge directly into uh, Tom Cruise's eye unless you pull back with all your muscles. <laughs> Uh, I know you've mentioned this before on our podcast, The Weekly Planet, which is a podcast that we do, Mason. That's right. Um, There's a digital camera in this the size of a brick. (laughs) Oh my God, is there? (laughs) What's fascinating about that inclusion is in the previous movie, they're all wearing glasses with miniature cameras in it. That's right. And they're hidden and they're super HD (laughs) and they can transmit across. But that was the magic technology (laughs) of like movie espionage. Yeah. And we had nothing at all similar to that. But all of a sudden in like the late 90s, the year 2000, all of a sudden we get actual digital cameras and they're like, my God, we have to <laughs> showcase this in a movie somehow. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Also, it's it's Mask City, mate. It's too it really much. Is, yeah. and, and I know they they take it a little bit further in terms of um, like the voice modulator, uh-huh. but there's things in this that it's too far and they pull back on later movies and there's more explanation behind the printing of them and, and things like that. But uh-huh. it's just everybody and anybody at all points in time. And that doesn't look quite as good a lot of the yeah. time. There's one where Tom Cruise is running, you know, he pulls it off. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them look better than that. At but one point, Tandy Newton uh, reveals her secret relationship with Ethan Hunt yes. uh, to what she believes is Ethan Hunt. And then it turns out it's it's evil Ethan Hunt. Yeah. But that shouldn't have happened. In a world where masks are so commonplace... Ethan Hunt should have absolutely said to her, I'm going to send you undercover. FYI, everybody's going to be a bad guy with a me mask on. That's right. So don't reveal anything. (laughs) Exactly. If you suspect it might not be me, tug at the edges of my shirt collar until my face comes off. Or kiss it. Even if it is me, just keep tugging at my face until it comes off. If you kiss that mask... (laughs) You're knowing it's a mask, right? You hope so. What, are yeah. they heated? I they go up, they go over the lips. I guess they do, right? I guess they're heated by Tom Cruise's passion for movie making and stunts. Oh, no doubt. So, yeah, so you'd never know. I don't mind the one reveal of when he swaps himself out for Richard Roxburgh and he's taped mm. up his mouth, and I think that's that's a, that's that's, a good that's reveal. A, yeah, I think you do that one and. Maybe the one at the start. Yeah, you do. You have to do a setup and then like an yeah. enforcement and then a reveal. But to do one every couple of scenes is too <laughs> yeah. much. Yeah. It's too much, mate. Use it sparingly so it makes the most impact, like Do Grey Scott wearing a full denim suit. <laughs> And then it's impactful. That's the one thing I remember from watching this movie in the cinema. I'm like, wow, he's, everything he's wearing is made of denim. The shirt's denim, the jacket's denim, the tie's denim. Good on him. That must be hot in Sydney in the yeah, I'd imagine it would be, especially around bloody racing time, am I right? If yeah, it's racing right. season. Mm-hmm. Before I talk about the evolution of Ethan Hunt's hair. Oh, of course, the most important part of this episode. Is there anything you want to add? Yes, James. <laughs> okay. Boy, is there. <laughs> well, again, a thing that didn't I didn't think about when I watched this in the cinemas but in re-watching it as an adult, there's a car chase sequence, and my God, is it suburban Australian. <laughs> like, these days, if you watch, like, a multi-million dollar action spectacular, the bad guy's motorcade is guaranteed to be a line of identical, all-black, brand-new Audi SUVs. Yep. Just, just loaded with men with machine guns. And, and maybe some There's like... eight men to a car. Exactly. And then maybe like some like some brand new motorcycles with people wielding katanas or whatever. <laughs> yes. But in the year 2000, in suburban and outer suburban and slightly regional New South Wales, yeah. clearly they couldn't acquire the brand new motors that they needed. And so what this is, is it's just a car chase where Ethan Hunt on his motorcycle is being pursued by men driving all your friends' first second-hand cars <laughs> in the 90s. The first car your mate got and went, it's a pretty cool car, yeah. right? And you're like, yeah, mate, yeah, pretty <laughs> really cool. pretty good. I'm pretty <laughs> sure they acquired all these cars by just going to a McDonald's parking lot like <laughs> after midnight. 
with just all these dudes milling around. I was like, hey, anybody want to sell this your car? We'll give you 500 bucks for it. They're like, all right. It's just Tom Cruise just absolutely machine gunning the fuel tank of a Holden Commodore. There's just Ford Falcon, just Ford Escorts. The Holden Vectra. There's the, the bad, at one point the bad guys are driving a Nissan Patrol. That's more your dad's car. I sure, think. okay, yeah, yeah. But yeah. my god, <laughs> it's just it's so quaint, yeah, and it, beautiful. It really is. It, it really captures a period in time, doesn't yeah. it? What an era of filmmaking. I don't yeah. think I've seen anything like it before or since. Right? Maybe the movie Two Hands. But that's meant to be set. That's in supposed like to be low class suburban Sydney. That's not set. <laughs> In a world of, like, high-class espionage and millionaires and yeah. millionaire mansions, you know what I mean? If you're dropping pineapple... That man has a painting with a dinghy on it in his <laughs> mansion. <laughs> if you drop... He's high-class. Okay, so the evolution of Ethan Hunt's hair. Go we're on. here. We're here again. He's more loosey-goosey in this movie, and I think it's because he's moved further and further away from his military past... He's yeah, clearly been yeah, doing yeah. some training and he's clearly kind of more kind of relaxed into his role and yeah. his hair reflects that. I think you're right. And I think maybe, you know, again, he swore he'd never he'd never come back to the IMF in the, in the last one. Did he? Yeah, kind of. I he's like, I'm that. not coming back. And Bing Rhames is like, you sure? And he's like, definitely, never again. And then the sequel, and he's like, no, I'm not. But I'm at the end, back. on the plane, and they're like, look at this tape. Oh my God, he did, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. All right, but anyway, I think, and, and they've offered him a sweet deal to come back. I think he couldn't resist. Yeah. Also, it's like, he's he spent a few years doing deep cover IMF stuff and he's like well, a deep cover dude needs a deep cover haircut just you know to, it yeah. yeah so anyway here's some facts for trivia that you'll love it's called trivia facts that you'll love mm. you'll love it we do it every week nice uh, this was and this blew my mind the biggest movie of 2000 monetarily wow. in the world my goodness it beat Gladiator it beat Shaft 2000 can you believe that <laughs> I can kind of believe that I mean this is a big franchise but I didn't realise it was this big that long ago also each director in this franchise has been asked to return for the sequel they saw what Brad Bird did and they went oh my god Brad Bird we love what you're doing come mm -hmm. back and he's like I can't I'm Brad Bird I'm doing Brad Bird things <laughs> leave me alone yeah that's I'm it like alright yeah but you know you'd Brian De Palma's you'd JJ Abrams but they didn't ask John Woo to come back Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> also, and this is very interesting to me. You know what? He's got a great legacy, though. Go back and watch The Killer. It's oh, a, absolutely. It's a primo movie. Th that cannot be denied. Mm. Uh, the song I Disappear by Metallica that's mm. on the soundtrack for this movie, I think it's a good song. You would. Uh, Lars has talked about how he met up with Tom Cruise and they had a very intense discussion about music and what it means and all those guys. You know, what are yeah, those yeah, discussions yeah. you'd have with Tom Cruise? And he got to see an early unfinished version of, of the movie to kind of write a song. And actually, this song was leaked early on Napster, and that's what started the famous Napster versus Metallica court case, oh, which changed God. the music industry. That's right. Yeah, so there you go. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Artists are getting screwed royally. Right now, yeah. Yeah, for what they're doing, and I, it does seem to stem back from, from this. I mean, you've got more access now than ever to get your information and you know get your music out there, but you're yeah. getting paid less. It's the relentless march of technology, James. It was going to happen sooner or later. That's but right. If you want to support your artists, go go get some merch, buy, buy something on vinyl, you know Exactly. What I mean? That's right. See him on tour when you can, not now. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, with his percentage deal on profits, royalties, and merchandise, uh, Tom Cruise made 75... Oh, exploding Oakley's. <laughs> yes. Tom Cruise Who's made 75 million off this movie. Good for him. And now it's time for me to replicate something famous and impossible from the movie Mission Impossible 2, MI2, which it maybe is also called. Yes. Okay, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> I replicated the look. Three quarter length pants, singlet hair, sunglasses. <laughs> I shaved my beard. <laughs> How did you do that so quickly? <laughs> I practice like top of this look, himself. You look great. Thank you, look, you. You never look better. This is one of those things where in like 10 years I'm like, <laughs> why did I put that on the internet forever? <laughs> look at the dog's face. <laughs> Ollie. <laughs> Well, we did it this time. I mean, he, he purchased some clothes, I guess, is yeah. what he did, and put them on. That's what people remember, though, isn't it? Yeah, is it? You no. want me to do a cartwheel kick? Yes. Fine, here it is. <laughs> I can't cartwheel. <laughs> I can't see you. Uh, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> wow. 
All right, this has been Mission Impossible 2 for Caravan of Garbage. What an experience. Definitely. We'll be back next week to talk Mission Impossible 3. But guess what? If you want to get that video a little bit early, you can actually go to bigsandwich.co, sign up. You also get the extended audio uh, editions early as well. Uh, there's also some bonus podcasts, some movie commentaries. There's an ad-free feed for our podcast, The Weekly Planet, which also comes out every Monday. If you do want to check it out, you don't have to, but you That's can. That's right. That's right. Uh, anyways, I've been, mis- I've been and am Mr. <laughs> Sunday Movies on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I continue to be Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. That's right. And let's yeah. let's come back next week for Mission Impossible Throp Thropple. As we say here every week, bury us when we're gone. <laughs> Teach us while we're here, but as soon as we belong, it's time we disappear. <laughs> 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 Do you think there's a chance that we replicated that song so well that the music copyright system in YouTube kicked in and this video has been demonetized? God, we can only hope. <laughs> That's the dream for <laughs> right. any musician. Right? All right, see you next week. Bye.